Okay guys, we are now going to do a multiplayer version of this game for you. We are on the Mario Kart Live and this is our second home circuit. So, JB, are you ready? I am ready. Okay, so this is the first time we've done multiplayer, so this is almost going to be kind of, kind of a bit of a tutorial for you guys, um, because it is for us as well. So, the first thing we need to do, I think, is pair the cart. So, press Y, press the ignition button to activate pairing mode. Okay, JB, do you want to pass me the cars over so we can scan them in? So, this is how to register your cart if you're doing it on the TV. You have to point it to this QR code. Oh, I did it. Okay, great, guys. So as you can see, that did take a little while. It's probably best to hold it maybe about two feet away from the TV, okay? And now we need to connect the cart for the light. So hopefully this will be a little easier for the light. We just need to turn on the ignition key and point it towards this QR code. So I might just hold it up a little bit so they'll level. Okay, so this is connecting now. Sometimes if you have any problems, just maybe hit the um, acceleration button again, stuff like that. So guys, now we've connected the two cars. We get this screen. We need to select multiplayer, obviously. So the only way that it appears you can do this is having two separate consoles. So as we demonstrate when connecting the cars, JB is going to be on the light um, and I've got the switch here set up through the TV. So, you know, we have had talks about if you can do split screens, that sort of thing, and ultimately it's just not looking possible. So we just want to host the game now. Oh, wow, okay. So we need to get it on the track. Um, I feel ultimately we need to... Um, you know, run a track and then it looks up four options on the left hand side where we can have people in. So here's the perspective from the light. So we're already hosting the party, so we just need to press multiplayer. JB is game. Okay guys, so as you can see, we have now got the two circles on the screen. I'm in gate one. But you can see the two JBs on the left. Okay, so set up race. Grand Prix. 100cc. Okay, what do we want? So we did the flowers last time because I remember JB struggling with the ice. Ooh, look at the Christmas one. I'm going to say let's go random. Okay, so create our course. So I guess we've already done that, so it's this kind of circle around here. So I think we should just quickly set this up. Obviously, you guys should know how to set this up by now. We have a few videos on that. But if not, you need to drive through all of these and just make sure you complete your course. It's a bit like Mario Maker in that you need to complete it in order to unlock playing it. So this is just a quick tutorial on how to do that. And then obviously we're going to cut away and, oh there I am, and see how we can get this multiplayer set up. Okay, so here's our course. Okay, so we need to get in the circles I'm in mind, so press X. We're just waiting on JB. Okay, so JB's connecting now I think. Yes, JB's up here, okay. So he's seeing exactly the same thing on the light as we're seeing here, except He's just not recording his because obviously we don't have a capture card for the light or anything like that. No! Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to get eaten by that plant. Guys, where's JB? What am I doing? Oh my gosh, where have I moved this one to? Oh 
Oh my gosh! Yay, I finished! Are you still going, JB? No way! To be honest, I feel sorry for JB because look, that first one should have been here. And I accidentally knocked it and it's now like all the way over here. <laughs> Look, there he is, there's JB. Oh, we finally finished. Okay guys, so before we can do our second race, we just need to tidy this up a bit. I think there was an issue with that. Like I was literally in first place all the way around and then I got to a corner and without any cars overtaking me I went from first to fifth. <laughs> I think it's because I knocked the gate so you couldn't drive through it. Anyway we're gonna tidy it up. I've just set the gates back up we are now gonna move on to race number two. Ooh. Oops. Oh <laughs> I thought we were going then I just panicked on yeah, head to gate one. X right. ready to race. <laughs> Go. I'm sorry. Why do you keep doing that? It really isn't difficult to steer though. <laughs> oh, I've got the boomerang. Okay, mushroom. Red shell. Yes, I red shelled you when you stalled. I hate you. I'm almost tempted to try and get that cardboard back in the right place. Yeah, you waste your time doing that, huh? Bye, Queegee. No! Yes! Alright, come on, come on, come on. Did you win? I did win. Ah, okay, I did slightly better that time. Don't know where I went wrong apart from plowing into the gate. Oh, oh. dude, you just plowed into the gate again. Okay, so Ooh. that's two victories for Millie and JB is down there in last place. Oh, I've just unlocked the pumpkin costume. Oh, there, so lucky. Who's the real winner? <laughs> hey, you dude. Okay, so again, let's set up these cardboard circuits. Okay, guys, so. Next race. Get in a little circle. I want to be at the one at the front, so I win. Again. Oh, so this is like an underwater level. It's quite cool. Yeah. And once your parents see some of these circuits, I think they're going to want to redecorate the dining room. Just like it just looks so much better underwater. <laughs> yeah, we'll just turn the tap on a few times, block the sinks. Yeah, that sort of thing. Right, I'm determined to win. No! Okay, chain chomp, let's go. I've been splatooned by something. Me too. Right, I'm on the last lap. JV, don't do it, JV. You better not be moving that finishing line again. <laughs> you did. I'm gonna take okay. it with me. Finished. No! <laughs> How am I on the last lap now? I've just stopped. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun though. Oh, I finished fifth, but I'm confident I still won. You know what? I I think you might have done as well. Yay! Woo! Go Millie! Go Millie! 
Okay, so Millie reigns supreme in this instance. Millie will always reign supreme. Okay, so I guess to kind of round things up, Millie, um, how do you think multiplayer went? So obviously there's the limitation of you need it, you know, one switch per cart. That can be a combination of two switch lights, two switches, or a switch and a switch light. Any of those combinations will do. So what is your take on it? Honestly, I had so much fun. I love it. I mean, I'm still kind of distraught that I don't have more eyes. I want to be able to see the screen. I want to be able to see the cars. I mean, I'm just looking forward to watching this video back so that I can see both perspectives. Like, you know, he had the phone recording too because it still breaks my heart that I can't watch everything all at once. I mean, multiplayer was so fun. I just wanted to turn it into bumper cars at some points. Um, my only kind of scope for improvement is I feel like we need to find a way to physically fix the cardboard, um, the cardboard gates. Yeah, almost if it was a more sturdy object. Like I've seen on videos and on articles that like people want it to be plastic, and I'm not sure if that would stop the issue. I just think it would make the the gates a bit hardier. But I'm not sure how to do it. How to work with the gimmick of you can change everything you can change what the courses are and also have that kind of scope of you can't move it like i'm thinking and you're probably gonna tell me i'm being an imbecile here but like getting some blue tack and physically sticking them down or almost virtual markers like you have to drive around the course anyway and stand like with the ink if you could say press the L button and it's like, would you like to generate a gate here? It might take more time. Yeah. And again, if people are just gonna get a cart in there and there isn't that thing of, you know, there's gates as well, whilst that isn't like a big hook, if people were paying say 99.99 for one cart and getting nothing else with it, again, I'm not sure if that would rub people the wrong way, but if there was yeah. a virtual gate, I have a feeling I, that would be okay. I do think there might be a little scope for improvement with this game. Like, I do think it primarily is just a case of you could literally just drive in a circle and go through the first gate five times and win. I do think that the road itself doesn't actually account for much. No, like, it's true. Like, even with a situation here, like, I, I don't know what happened, maybe I'm just awful, but I was in first place and then the gate swung around, so it was almost like the the game didn't know to compensate for these changes. It yeah. was just, it didn't bend, it, and this is not going to make sense, but it doesn't bend to what the race, the course should be anyway. It yeah. just takes it as though the whole thing shifted. Yeah, because sometimes the gate was in the middle of the track and you had to swerve off the track, so it wasn't really lined up too well. But no, I do think that maybe using something, just even like blue tack or something, just to hold those gates in place. Mm, definitely. And I think we'll definitely try that on our next video. And again, I think maybe with plastic or something, people would be more confident to do that. Because as mm. it is, I don't think there's a place to repair the gates or a place to buy more gates by themselves. So yeah. if using blue tack or sellotape or whatever damages them. them or think it gets stuck on there. I don't know how confident people would be to do that. So. I mean, we're quite lucky in that when you buy the multi-pack, you get two sets of gates. So if something did happen to one set, at least we do still have another one. And the issue that JB was speaking about there, the plastic, I feel like the reason that people may not be in support of that is just that cardboard f folds away so neatly and compactly. Perhaps with plastic, it won't be so flexible and just like, yeah, I guess so, but I don't know, I was just going to say, and another thing with cardboard is like you can recycle it, but then you can recycle plastic as well, so it's not even that they try to do it to be particularly like economical either, like, I don't know, I, I do think it's quite a good system because it's obviously very light, it's very easy to yeah. pick up and move about, but that's also to its detriment during, in the middle of the races, so. I mean, maybe as well, plastic, and I know this, uh, people say that it's more durable, but Maybe in a way it's not like, do you know what I mean? You, if you fold cardboard, you can fold it back. If you put too much pressure on plastic, it snaps. Mm. And if you're having cars crashing into this stuff all the time and banging it against a wall and stuff, cardboard bends back. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is a good point. Because, yeah, because once that's broken, it's broken, and then all you can do is a bit of a rudimentary repair job. Just get some sellotape yeah. around that. <laughs> so, how would you improve multiplayer, if at all? Um, see, for multiplayer specifically, 
I would quite like being able to do it split screen. One thing I love about playing Mario Kart on split screen, you can see where your opponent's at, how far away from them you are. Whereas with this, I do think it's a bit blurry and you can't actually see what the other person's doing. And I'd quite like it if I could see that and like really track them down. It motivates you of how far you need to get to to be winning. Um, also, like we said, if the opponent crashes into the gate, ruins it for the other person, so it's kind of like, how can we overcome that issue? Whereas if you're just on single player, it's just like you've only ruined it for yourself sort of thing. Yeah, that yeah, that is a really good point. And again, I think that kind of fixed gate thing within the game idea would sort that. One thing I would do to improve is, for all the USP is the fact that it's these real carts, but in, you know, kind of the real world. It's interesting because the fact that I could see my Luigi character be like a Mario model, the fact that I was still seeing you as the RC cart and not the Mario Kart mm. in-game model, that was also a bit off-putting because we were literally racing against the Koopalings, which I didn't anticipate, so they were all like, as they appeared in the games, as was I, yeah. and it was just very jarring to then see a lone RC cart as my opponent, just like, yeah. I don't know, I just wish that they'd made it so you could see both of us as that Something version. else I want to throw out there, you know, for multiplayer. Multiplayer think and even the single player, okay, people want a different array of characters. So I'm gonna like probably get jumped on here in the comments within a feminist or whatever. But there's no female characters. You can get Mario, you can get Luigi. I want Peach. I'm like a Peach girl. That's who I always choose when we play any Mario game. And I don't want to be stuck as Mario. That's that's Steve's character, it's not mine. Like you know, JB's little brother, whenever we play games together, he's Mario, JB's Luigi, and I'm Peach. So I just feel so left out. Well, it is a very important, maybe like not a feminist issue, but also a representation issue. Mm. Because it just seems so archaic. Because even in what, you know, we were talking about it on the podcast, even with like games like Animal Crossing, whilst it isn't gender based, we're not suggesting for a moment that. You know, once you boot into the game, it says, would you be want to be a boy or a girl? I think that's very much a thing that Nintendo is trying to phase out, and wisely so. But, like, literally, like you say, just having that Peach car toy available there, because this very much, as it stands, just seems like a game for, you know, boys, a game for guys, and I don't think that's right at all. I mean, another point that I really want to raise on that variety perspective is when we were setting up multiplayer, it gave you enough space to add four players into one race, but there's only two car variants. It does seem like so that just an seems oversight. bizarre in itself. Like, how do you know? Say you're Luigi, you're gonna, have, you could be against three Mario's. How do you know what's what? How do you know which is which? I do very much feel like they need to add more variation into this. I mean, I guess that's a single player issue as much as it is a multiplayer issue, yeah. but in terms of the whole game, I don't know why they wouldn't make a Peach character. I don't know if it's that they thought this game was going to be very niche and not a lot of people would buy it. But again, equally, I just think that's taking, like, I don't know. People need Peach in this game without a shadow of a doubt. Like, I hate it when Luigi gets the short straw, the fact that you can't play him in Odyssey. But, and this is going to be controversial, they have to have Mario. There's no way that they could have Mario Kart Home Circuit and not have Mario. Yeah, it's right there in the title. I would almost wish that if they were only going to make two, I would almost wish that it was Mario and Peach. Because they need that kind of selling point. It needs to be Female. inclusive. And the fact that it isn't, I think, is not unforgivable, but it's just such an obvious thing that this should, they should be a wave two. And if there is a wave two, I hope she's included. I mean, even then though, I feel like the reason that maybe they're doing limitations on this is because you would need, say you want Peach, you've got to buy an entire new car. So say they're not including the cardboard stuff with it, instead of a hundred pounds, they might do it for like 80. 80 pound per car, still no one's gonna be like, oh well, just for variety, let's go spend £80. It's like, well, no, no one's going to do that. What they maybe should have done, and I'd have quite liked this from a marketing perspective, is with in the Harry in the Harrier in the Mario Home Circuit box, you get these, you get the markers, and you get a car. But the camera's detachable because that's the more expensive element. Then you can buy extension oh. cars and just slot the camera onto the car, so they could actually do the cars uh, like. 
the individual cars a lot cheaper, say like £30 per variant, because they wouldn't need to have wired all the camera and that things in with it. And then if you, and still do it as they're doing it now, where you need to buy an entire new box per player, but that then you can have a box full of cars and you all choose your own car, that were then only £30 each instead of being like, oh, well, you know, we have to buy every variant which people aren't going to want to do. That's actually an amazing idea. And people really want detachables. Like, on our video what, that we posted, you know, the endurance test to see what they would do with outside, people want detachable outdoor cars, like off-roading tyres that you can fit onto these carts. Like, detachables are things that people really want. Mm -hmm. And I feel that that would, that would be amazing. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why Peach isn't there. And I do think that that detachable idea you had is amazing because maybe at this point it would be too late to implement that. It would be something more for a Mario Kart Live Home Circuit 2 perhaps or a revision. But if they did that, that would be absolutely incredible because I'm not sure how much the actual car itself would cost. Well, if you think about it, in that box that's like £120, £100, something like that, you only get a few pieces of cardboard and then this car. So you've got to think that, say if it's 100, this car's going to be at least 80. So if I then wanted to get a peach car, it's going to be another 80. And the main part of the price from that is going to be in that camera. So if they'd have just done it where you could detach and reattach the camera, they could do all those individual cars for like 30. And everybody would be like, oh, well, you know, I need to collect the cars. Let's get the cars. Yeah. Whereas now it's coming across as a car's an entire game in itself. So it's not a collector's item. So people aren't going to be going out to get every variant. See, I think, again, that with this kind of idea of the Mario and Peach thing that I suggested, the reason why you said that maybe they shouldn't do a Peach or they didn't, or the reason why they didn't do a Peach was that no one would spend that price just for variation. But I think if people only want one, it's quite a big thing to limit. And then you could bring in Luigi as, as something yeah. people, because I think people would spend that almost as an alternative skin for Mario, or if people really prefer Luigi, like I do, and I think maybe some people do. I don't know, I, I do think it's it's amazing. Now, another thing that I kind of want to get into, unless you've got something else to I'm say I'm sorry, about just that. on that like point, I was just thinking, because I've got lots of young children in my family, and I've got a niece who's six, and she'd love this game. But if she's told that there was only male characters, she's at that age where she's like, boys are silly, I don't want to be a boy. There is a big target audience there of young children where the girls are, you know, when everyone's still like, you know, girls have got cuties or whatever it is like people say. Like, it that does tend to matter a lot to, a pe to people. And so to not have like, you know, at least a male and female character for those that are younger and like influenced by gender and that sort of thing. They really are like minimalizing things. Yeah, and I guess to a point like like you were saying, I mean obviously that isn't a great mentality for children to have. No, you know, no, being it's scared. Not, so but... you could argue that maybe being forced to like play as Mario or Luigi could prevent that. But that's kind of a bad argument, you know, like it would just be great to have like a brother and sister um, I don't know, you could just imagine one of them playing as Peach, one of them playing as Mario, and that would just be so much fun. Now, I don't I, know. I would love that. Imagine we could do a special feature, me, you, and C, like good old days, because like the first time I ever met C, we went down to the games room, we all played Mario Party together, Mario Kart together, and we were Mario, Peach, and Luigi. Like, I want to do that again. Like, oh my gosh. Like, I don't know. I think... I don't know if Nintendo would do that, because I didn't think this would sell well at all. But from the comments as well, it's sold out in America? Germany, in America. Like These people can't get these anywhere. Like They're looking online, it isn't there. They're looking in stores, it isn't there. And I don't know why, because it's a great game, but I don't know why it's flying off the shelves if retailers just didn't stock up because they thought it would be too niche or, or I don't know what's going on. Yeah, see, I think there's the niche, I think there's the price element. And do you know what? And I don't want to come across as ungrateful here because JB bought this for us and it was really kind of him to do that. But I personally don't think that the cameras on it are that good. No, I mean, I think they're that certainly not 
the quality that was shown in the trailers for the game. Exactly. I think there's going to be a lot of people out there that were quite disappointed by that kind of quality. I mean, I don't mind. I'm having fun with you and I really enjoy doing that. And, you know, we're doing the videos for the channel and I love the channel. I love all our um, subscribers. And, you know, it's just fun to get this out. But I do think that if I was looking at this from a critical perspective, there are a lot of issues that make it not worth the money, like the gates moving around, the tracks aren't cohesive, you don't need to go all the way around the track, you can easily just go off-road, whereas in the actual Mario game, that would just cut your speed completely, it doesn't do that here, you can miss out gates, the cameras aren't that great, so there's a lot, really, but I'm just looking at this as a fun game, but if I were to critique it really thoroughly, I think, you know, I'd probably... Again, if I was playing this on my own, wasn't involved with JB in the channel, I'd probably give it about 5 out of 10. Like, the cameras are quite bad, the gates is a bit of an issue. But yeah, I'm repeating myself quite a lot here. Yeah, it's, it's a game at the end of the day. Like, I would say it's a lot more than a toy, and I've been very vocal about how I think this is going to serve as, I guess, you know, step one of yeah. a ladder that's just going to continue evolving and growing in the same way that Mario 64, we look back at that, there's so many issues with it technically, <laughs> graphically. And but at the time it was revolutionary, yeah. right? And right now this is. Like for all we've seen better cameras out there like, oh, you know, camera on our iPhones are all amazing and look at the, how blurry it is on this car. This is the very kind of first game that does yeah, this. And literally this is us playing Mario 64 now and I think that our children, they're grandchildren, gonna have yeah, they're going to have the odyssey of this game. <laughs> that's what they're going to be playing just casually, like it's the regular home console. Like That's how much I think this is going to influence the future of gaming. But I guess it's just kind of a privilege to be here at the start of it. But it, it, it does come with the issues, you know, of the kind of baby steps and growing pains. Like it's yeah. got a long way to go until it is at that level, like a lot. But one thing I do need to praise the game for is that I don't think there was any particular lag in terms of how the two carts reacted to each other in multiplayer. Like, when I got hit with a red shell, I instantly felt, like, the cart moving. When the chain chomp was activated, I could feel the swerve. And even, you know, that kind of first level, it was a bit like a sandstorm. Yeah. I could feel, like, the Joy-Cons were almost pulling me that way. It was so immersive. Like, I could feel, like, the kind of friction when I tried to go into the sandstorm, like... In terms of the kind of mixed reality, it was actually immensely good, and I really did enjoy it. So, in terms of, like, this isn't like a review of the full product, this is just kind of like the multiplayer section, but I can imagine that this is going to be one of those things, a bit like, um, just like a standard Mario game, like one of the 2D games or the 3D world games. Even if you don't like the base game, if you manage to have the means, the ability to play multiplayer, I think you're going to have an amazing time. Like, even if it does have problems and it isn't that polished, if you get a good friend, you're over. Obviously, now it would be a bit difficult to do that, but if you've got siblings, people that you live with, if you manage to get your hands on two carts and two switches, I would, th I would think it was very, very hard to not have a good time with, like, the jokes and the kind of back and forth that you're going to have. Like, this is, this is fun. And I mean, not only that, but I do think if you're a creative person, it opens a few gateways for you. Like, you don't have to do this where you have the gates open. I mean, I just wanted to play bumper cars with JB. <laughs> and as well, um, we kind of came up with a few prank perspectives for this. So what we did is we hid the car under a sofa. And then as JB's parents were coming down the stairs, we drove the car out at them and they were a bit like, ah, what is this? Because <laughs> they didn't even know we'd got this game. So it's just fun for a variety of reasons. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, that you're playing it by the game. Like we played hide and seek with this, okay? So we just opened all the doors on one floor of the house and just like testing range and stuff. I just drove it into one of the rooms and then made JB run around the floor trying to like find out where I'd driven it to, that sort of thing. So yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, I think in terms of multiplayer, if I can give it a standalone score, I'd say, um, depending on who you play with, it will either be um, a 6 or 7. Now, 
that's purely because of the limitations we have and the fact that if you do want that experience, if you've only got one Switch, it is a shame you can't pair it with another set of Joy-Cons or even do the single Joy-Con on the side thing or a Pro Controller. It's an awful shame you can't do that. So it is going to be very pricey to do this multiplayer, which is a surprise from Nintendo that kind of thrive upon, you know, on the couch, side by side yeah. multiplayer, you know, couch co-op. And so, I mean, not yeah. only that, sorry to interrupt, but it's not like you can just buy an extra car as an extension. You have to buy an entire new set that comes with a new, a new set of gates. It's not that, say, you can get an extra car with, say, 30% price reduction. No, no, So not it is all. very costly. So it's not just about having the other Switch. It's about getting that entire new set. So, yeah, it's a lot. And again, I'm really privileged to have JB who covered that for me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been playing this. So, yeah, I'll give it a 7 a 7 out of 10 for multiplayer. It's a really good time, I'm sure, like, and this is just the official multiplayer, mind you, that isn't even getting into the pranks you can do with this, or, like, the bumper car feature. In terms of so the... So you better watch out with the pranks <laughs> you can do with this, JV. In terms of the base game, the base multiplayer, it's a good 7 out of 10. Like, I will be sure... I'm, I'm going to be playing this for hours, honestly. I've re I really love this a lot, so yeah. I, I'm just happy the pets didn't run in. I thought the cats were going to hear these cars whizzing around and be like, Wah! and like pounce on them. Well, that would be that would be good video content. <laughs> okay, guys, so we do hope you've enjoyed this. Please drop your comments below your thoughts on the game. Maybe if we're missing something with this, how we can get our full enjoyment out of this game, or also what you want to see. So we have done some durability tests. We have a video on our channel where we've taken this car outside, where we've driven it down some stairs. <laughs> we've really put these cars to the test and they were still here to do this race today. So there is lots to check out there. We are full on going for it with this Mario 35th anniversary. We have playthroughs of all stars. We have Lego builds. There is so, so much. Also, if you Animal Crossing fans out there who enjoy some Mario content, we have a Mario Island tour. We have a huge array of island tours. We have Pokemon. We have playlists of Harry Potter, Halloween. There's so, so much on our channel, guys. Please, please, please like this video and go check it out. Subscribe, turn on those notifications. And again, thank you so, so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. JB and Millie.